Hello friends, your old buddy Justin McElroy here. Uh, uh, you know, I've recently gotten into woodworking. It's been my lifelong passion since the late May of 2020. Uh, and I was thinking about doing a woodworking video for you, and then I remembered that no one likes to hear about woodworking. This is true. Uh, unless you, It's incredibly boring, and if you do woodworking, you don't even really want to hear about woodworking, but you do want to talk about woodworking. And that gave me this idea. Well, why don't we... Uh, make a video that teaches you how to have fake an interest in woodworking. Uh, this is not deceit. This is just giving you the basic tools that you need to, if you encounter someone who does woodworking in your day-to-day -day life, maybe it's a loved one, a friend, uh, a new acquaintance that you uh, would like to impress uh, by, again, you don't impress with your own woodworking by taking an interest in their woodworking. It's like some Dale Carnegie shit. Uh, I'm going to give you the tools to do that today. So let's get started. Uh, again, you're not going to learn how to do any actual woodworking today. If you want to do that, uh, check out this guy, Steve Ramsey. I learned everything from him. There's a bajillion uh, videos on YouTube uh, that he has done and many other people have done. There's tons. Go for it. So, okay. So you encounter someone who uh, does woodworking. It's the first thing you ask. Well, ask to see pictures of some of their projects. If you're not at their home where the projects are, ask to see pictures. If you're at the home, ask to see the projects. You might be thinking, there's no way they have pictures on their phone of the woodworking projects they've done. They do. They have projects, uh, all of them, captured in their phone, guaranteed. Uh, they take pictures of all of them. Uh, I have pictures of all my projects that I've ever done, saved on my phone, because I put them on Instagram or Facebook or wherever. Uh, but trust me, they have pictures. So ask to see pictures. Second, what do you say first when you see it? I would go with, wow, that's really clean. Clean refers to precision. Beauty can come from the design of the thing. Clean is uh, a compliment to the execution of the thing. It's really clean. Uh, that'll make it sound like you know what you're uh, talking about. They can't take any credit, unless it's their design, they can't take credit if it's beautiful. A lot of the beauty in woodworking comes from the materials you started with or the design of the thing. But cleanliness comes down to execution. So compliment the cleanliness. That's thing one. Next, ask what type of wood it is. You won't care, and it won't mean anything to you, the answer. Uh, and it is very, very hard, unless you're like a an expert to determine the kind of wood on site. So asking what type of wood it is. A couple things to know about that. Uh, if it's pine, pine is uh, a soft wood. It's one of the cheapest ones. Most uh, like hard, big box hardware stores uh, have loads of pine for construction projects. It's cheap. Uh, it can be hard to work with. And if it's something looks really good and made of pine, that's impressive. That should be impressive to you. Wow, that's pine? Because they know it's cheap. If it's anything other than pine, you know, it's great. That's good Good for them. You know it's a ni like, nice. Oh, nice. Uh, ask how that was to work with. Um, one thing you should know uh, that I didn't get in, plywood, um, I had a lot of negative connotations about, um, but actually plywood has a lot of uh, benefits. It's, it's strong. Uh, it's harder to shear things out of plywood. Uh, it doesn't move, it's not as uh, susceptible to uh, humidity and, and other things like that. It's a little more settled um, than uh, wood like this. Um, and also, uh, it can be veneered with a better kind of wood on the outside. So plywood is, is just thin strips of wood all glued together. Um, but it can be veneered with all kinds of exotic woods on the outside. So it can look great too. So plywood, if you hear plywood, don't be thrown. That can be, uh, especially for bigger projects, uh, very common. Uh, 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 the next thing that we're going to say, wow, that must have been a pain to sand. Why is this a good thing to say? Well, sanding is always annoying. Uh, no one likes to sand. If they say they like to sand, they're a liar. Uh, if, if you're sanding, you're going to use, uh, you've seen sandpaper, right? You, you uh, People rub that on the thing if they want to do it by hand. This in case they mention it, it's called a random orbit sander. It spins in a random pattern so you don't get lines when you're sanding things. Those little strips of um, these little uh, discs can be replaced with different grits, which is uh, um, 
uh, refers to how smooth the end product is. The higher the number, the smoother. Asking what grit sandpaper they use, that's a great question. Uh, if you hear 60, that's really more for forming. 50, 60, somewhere around there, that's more for forming. Uh, when you get up to like 320 and above, that's like really smooth. Like if it's really smooth, you can ask like those supposed to be in a really fine grit sandpaper and compliment the sanding because it's annoying to do. So they will, they will appreciate it. Uh, next, and this is probably our most complicated one. Oh, joinery. Okay. So in my experience, and again, May. So you're only going to be able to fake to know about as much as I do. <laughs> but that's fine. Because uh, again... They're just looking for a listener. Joinery. Uh, the, the, one of the main, if not the main arts of woodworking uh, is combining two pieces of wood into one, to, joining them, right? And there's a lot of different types of joinery. Uh, I'm going to teach you to identify some of them right now, not how to do them. That's a different video. But I'm going to teach you how to identify them so you can complement the woodworker of them. Okay, so. Uh, uh, first is a, a butt. Butt is very, I know it's funny. Butt is this or this. It's just the wood pressed up against the other wood and uh, screwed in, nailed in, glued in together. Glue, I should mention when we're talking about joinery, uh, this is another misconception I had that glue was uh, kind of a cheap and easy uh, hack for woodworking. And it, uh, as it turns out, um, pretty much everybody uses glue all the time. It's very strong, stronger than wood once it is dried. Uh, and it's a good way to adhere things permanently. A lot of times you'll see uh, those two in conjunction. You'll see wood glue and uh, nails, or more commonly wood glue and, scr wood, wood glue and screws. Uh, I use this little guy as a glue bot. Uh, I dump my wood glue in there and it sucks the glue back in when you're not using it. I roll in this house with tight bond two because it's a good glue. Um, so, okay, so types of joining, that's a basic butt. Number two, miter butt. That is wood where I don't have all these to show you, obviously, but that is uh, at a 45, when the wood has been cut at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle here, and then they're joined together at a diagonal. Think most picture frames, that's a mitered butt, where it's like cut at a 45 degree angle, which is also called a miter, uh, and combined there. Uh, number three is a biscuit joint. That is kind of like a butt, except there is a little disc that has been jammed in the middle where the two are butted together. You have to have a special tool for, tool for this called a biscuit joiner, uh, but it's a little, I don't have one, but it's a disc of wood that goes in there called a biscuit and hold the two together. Uh, I don't know how you would identify that on site. Uh, four is, I got my cheat sheet here, tongue and groove. Okay, tongue and groove is like one board has a tongue coming out and the other one has a groove and they go like this. They slot in together like that. That They're joined with a tongue and groove. Number six on my sheet is a rabbit joint. Now I do have this to show you. A rabbit joint, it's called a rebate in the UK. If you want to throw that kind of trivia out. But a rabbit joint is I'm sure this, where the board here is kind of cut in in half, okay? And this board then, because it of the rabbit, slides in right there and they join. I'll get you a little closer here. Like that. And it just slots in there. Uh, like that, so it kind of uh, holds them together. These are good because they're self-squaring, which means that it keeps all the angles nice. That's a, if you see like the half of the board cut away and then the other half joined in there. Um, similar to that is a half lap, which is like if you had uh, one rabbit here and another rabbit here, and then they laid on top of each other and joined like that. You can also have boards where you have grooves cut out in each of them, and then the grooves lay over each other and kind of interlock, if that makes sense. Uh, next is a dovetail. Dovetails are hard. I don't know how to do dovetails, but a dovetail is when you have the cut like this, and they kind of go together like that. It's pretty, probably seen it on fancier things, but so this is a dovetail. If you see this, that's a dovetail. Uh, 
what else I got? Um, we got Mortis and Tenon. This one is like, there's a hole in the wood like that and a little thing like this on the other end of wood and it just, <laughs> get this in. Just like that, that's Mortis and Tenon. Uh, ninth is Pocket Joint. Now, this can be hard to identify. Um, pocket Joint, you do it with a jig like this. And basically what happens is the wood goes in here and there's little holes for your screw gun, there's a special bit that you get and it goes in here and basically what it does is it puts a diagonal hole in the wood. The diagonal hole looks like, I don't know if you can see these, so they look like that. And uh, basically you put another piece of wood like this or like this and then you screw in diagonally like that, right? Uh, it's a way of getting a screw into two pieces at the edge where they meet. You're basically going at a very slight diagonal. Um, pocket holes, uh, one telltale sign is the pocket holes leave holes like this. So uh, they need, there's special plugs you can buy that just fill those in directly. You can also cut them out of dowels, if you, which is like little thin sticks if you want to. Um, so if they use pocket holes and you don't see those, you can ask. Uh, how they fill the holes because you don't see them. Uh, that's pocket holes and that, those are our, our pocket joints. Those are our basic types of uh, uh, joinery. Uh, you'll see glue by the way a lot more than you see nails. Um, that's just uh, nails are used sometimes for holding things uh, in place sometimes but you don't see a ton of nails. It tends to be a lot more um, uh, you'll see nails for finishing and stuff like that, but uh, more than often it's glue and screws or one of these joinery uh, methods. A uh, quick bit more of terminology, one other sort of joinery thing. Um, you see, these, these are called dados, and they're called dados because they go across the grain of the wood. They'd be called uh, grooves if they went with the wood. Um, and basically what these do is I cut a bunch of these dados trying to find the, the, the best fit for actually this piece of red oak that I was working with. So I was trying to find the, the right width. I think that ended up being just about right. See how nice that is? And it just slots right in there. So this is like a dado, like that, right? So a dado can join two things like that. Um, a rabbit is basically just a dado on the end of the wood. So that's the, the difference between these. See? Same same basic idea. Rabbit, dado. Um, last thing that I want to cover real quick. If you see any edges that look nice, uh, that is because they have been routed. Um, and this is... This is a router, and it's probably one that you don't see. I wasn't familiar with it. Um, you know, a lot of people have seen the table saw or the uh, miter saw. That's the one that pulls down. Uh, chop saw, I think some people call that. Uh, table saw. Um, I'm pointing at the table saw. You can't see, but there's a table saw there. Uh, a router is cool because it's kind of a workhorse and can do a bajillion different things. Basically, let me, let me bring this up there. Hold on. Basically, with a router, what you got is you have the base and you have this like ledge here, right? And then you have a, a bit in the router that spins really, really, really fast. I think like 20,000 uh, RPM. And it cuts the wood uh, as it spins. And that can be used to, people use it to cut circles. I'm bending over now. People use it to cut circles in wood. You can do that. You can cut through wood with it if you want. Um, but each bit, these are router bits here. Each bit has a different shape that it cuts, right? So uh, that one that I've got out there is a Roman OG bit. I don't know, but it's got this little like design there. Um, you can see other bits for other purposes here, some for cutting out. 
uh, slots. Maybe you could use that for like a tongue and groove kind of thing. These are round over bits that just give like a rounded edge. If the edge of the of any of the edges of the piece, I'm gonna go around here, hold on. If any of the edges of the piece look fancy at all, they've probably been routed. So you can ask about this. Did you route these? Uh, what kind of bit did you use? Et cetera, et cetera. This is a router and it cuts. I don't want to do... My wife is recording her podcast, so I can't turn this off. Listen how loud. So basically, you would run it along the edge of this and it would cut one of those shapes into it. It's routing. Um, let's see, you got a wood... Last thing. Bonus. Uh, if you've got a woodworker in your life and you want to get a gift for them, um, one of the things that I would suggest that they may not have is this glue bot. Uh, a ton of woodworkers have these, uh, but if they don't have one, this is a great tool. You fill it with glue, and like I said, it sucks the glue back up. It makes it a lot less messy. Uh, it's a lot easier to squeeze than this bad boy right here. Uh, this does have an applicator tip on it, but like the, the glue bot is, is better, and it costs like 15 bucks. This is great. Um, the other thing that I really like, I have these, um, they're by 3M, called Work Tunes, and these are ear protection, which is essential in the, I just put this on in case you don't know what ear protect, but this is ear protection, it's essential for anybody who's doing any kind of woodworking, uh, but it has uh, Bluetooth built in, so you can sync right here to your phone and listen to stuff while you're, while you're working, great gift for uh, a woodworker in your life. Um, that is the that is my introductory primer course. Those are the things that you should ask if you're looking at a woodworking project. Again, let's review. Wow, that's really clean. Well, no, first, ask to see pictures or ask to see the thing. Uh, by the way, if, if you do see the thing in person, what the person wants you to do, especially if it has doors or any other way for you to interact with it, do that. I just finished a cabinet and everybody who I showed it to they, they didn't open the cabinet doors. And I kept having to ask, like, open the cabinets. And there's nothing special about that, except it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to do, like it to, 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 or at least it was for me, and to make it work right. Uh, so open the thing. If there's things you can do on it, you know, uh, open it, interact with it. Um, appreciate the little details like that. So that's if you see it in person. Wow, that's really clean. It's not beautiful, it's clean. Uh, ask what kind of wood. Remember, pine is cheap, but if they make it look good with pine, yeah, that's good. That's an impressive feat. Uh, and plywood is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, uh, number, what is it? number four, that must have been a pain to sand. Random orbit sander for large things, uh, smaller things. You're not going to fit a random orbit sander in, so it'll be uh, something else. I use, uh, Steve Ramsey has this little bit where he puts, uh, he glues sandpaper to the, one of the paint sticks. There's like glue, sandpaper, with spray adhesive, and those are really good. This is getting into woodworking. Um, asking about the joinery, identifying if you can from those different types, uh, and, and if you can't, asking about the kind of joinery, that's a tough thing and people want to talk about it. Uh, and lastly, routing. If there's fancy edges, if they're round, if they're decorative at all, ask about if they were routed. Um, and that is uh, the, the lay of the land that will help you fake an interest in woodworking. Uh, and if you want to, uh, not fake, but have a real interest in supporting the things that you love, I would ask that you go to maximumfund.org forward slash join and, uh, help support our podcast. Like my brother, my brother, me, Sawbones, the adventure zone, still buffering, Schmanners, wonderful, uh, you, you name it. We have a ton and uh, we really need your support. So if you could take some time to do that right now during the Max Fun Drive, there's great gifts uh, that you'll see on the website, but the important thing is supporting the stuff you love uh, in much the same way that I love woodworking and have for my entire life since May of 2020. Thank you for indulging me while I talk about woodworking. I know it's extremely boring, um, but thanks for hanging in there and I hope this helps. Bye-bye.